my name is Eleanor, like you probably already realized. <laughs> Genetically modified salmon is safe for the food market as can be evidenced through the approval of the Food and Drug Administration, the improbability of crossbreeding mutations occurring, and the positive impa impacts genetically modified salmon would have on the environment. An organism that has, that has been genetically modified has had its DNA altered in some way that does not occur naturally. Genetically engineered salmon has our DNA that includes a growth hormone gene from Chinook salmon um, under the regulation of a promoter sequence, which is a section of DNA that turns on the expansion, the expression of a gene sequence from an ocean pout. The Food and Drug Administration, or the FDA, approved the genetically modified Aqua Advantage salmon produced by the company Aqua Bounty as safe for consumption, which shows that it is safe for the food market. Um, genetically engineered salmon was first researched in the 1980s, which eventually led to the creation of the first transgenic salmon in 1989. Research continued for almost 20 more years before it was approved. Usually a new GMO takes 13 years and around $130 million of research before it is approved to come to the market. More than 75 different studies were conducted on genetically engineered salmon before it was approved by the FDA. All genetically modified foods must be found as safe as the original product before it can be approved. FDA scientists have said food from Aqua Advantage salmon is as safe as food from conventional Atlantic salmon and there is a reasonable certainty of no harm from the consumption of food from this animal. There is no biologically relevant difference between food from Aqua Advantage salmon and conventional Atlantic salmon based on the criteria evaluated. Any possible crossbreeding that would occur are crossbreeding mutations that would occur are strictly prevented by precautions, such as all modified um, eggs are female and sterile and also all salmon is grown on land-based facilities, which prevents them from um, escaping to the ocean and breeding with non-genetically modified salmon. As yet another precaution, all tanks are physically contained by netting and screens and other physical barriers such as standpipes and incubator trays. Um, yet another reason genetically modified salmon would be safe for the market is because of the positive impact it would have on the environment. The Aqua Advantage salmon grows to market size using 25% less feed than any Atlantic salmon on the market today which means that this helps conserve wild fish stock. It also helps reduce carbon emissions because um, the genetically modified salmon is grown on into land-based facilities that are near cities, um, so their transportation is a lot less than the average wild caught salmon. Genetically modified salmon also enables low impact fish farming Aqua Bounty has said, salmon will be raised in optimized conditions with total control of the water coming in and going out, which will allow for removal of waste and the recycling of greater than 95% of the water used. Aqua Advantage salmon production systems will be operated at relatively low densities so as to optimize fish health and minimize the environmental impact of the production system. In conclusion, 
genetically engineered salmon would be safe for the market, as is evidenced by the approval of the FDA, the low probability of cross-breeding mutations, and the positive impact it would have on the environment. Thank you. All right, well, at the beginning you have the proposition, but it kind of runs into the preview, and I couldn't distinguish at first your main proposition and the first supporting claim. I did think after listening to the uh, body of the speech that I could pick it out and say, okay, well, that's the dividing point, but that needs to be clear at the beginning of the speech. Uh, the thing that I think is missing at the beginning of the speech is any notion that somebody disputes this or that there's controversy on this. I don't know that anybody is arguing that GMO salmon is problematic or that there is some risk. You kind of suggest uh, some risks that are controlled for. Uh, the main risk that you present is the notion of cross-contamination and cross-breeding by the animals getting it into the uh, natural system and that being a potential problem. And most of your argument there is about how uh, they've attempted to manage that and, uh, and address that sort of issue. Um, you know, uh, even then, I'm, uh, like I said, I think you need to do a little bit more to tell us why we need to hear this argument so that we'll be more motivated to listen to uh, the position that you're taking. You did have a preview of the supporting structure. That's, like I said, it was a little unclear at the beginning that the FDA thing was not part of the original point, uh, but it is actually the first of the supporting points that you have. And then the other points were a little bit clearer. Um, you know, it, on the first point, in essence, your, your position is if the FDA says it's good, it must be good, and then you have a reason that why we should trust the FDA based on the number of studies that were done, the amount of time that they took before they approved it. Uh, I think that those are probably fine. The notion that they are not that there's no significant difference between genetically modified salmon and those that occur naturally, like the Atlantic salmon that you talked about. I think that that's pretty good information. I assume it comes from the FDA site, but sometimes it sounds like it comes from the manufacturer, and I guess I can call it the manufacturer or the, the, the fish raising group, what, I don't know how you would term that group, you know, the fishery. I'm going to say manufacturer because it, it sounds like you know, that, that would apply there. It sounds like some of the data that you're giving it to us comes from the manufacturers of this particular product. And so that there is a little bit of potential bias that's built in there. Uh, I think that that needs to be, you know, some more independent information would probably be helpful. Um, the advantage on the third point is basically an argument that says because we can produce it at local levels, uh, and it doesn't have to be transported, that that's going to have a minimal impact on uh, global temperature change because it limits the carbon dioxide. I think that that's a little bit of a stretch. There's not really any quantification on that. Uh, there is a point earlier in the speech where you talked about how the uh, they consume less food, and so there's going to be less deterioration of other food stocks. I assume that the, the feeding food stock, for instance, is what you're talking about there. So that, that, again, that doesn't sound like it's a bad thing. I just don't know how significant any of that is uh, and whether other salmon are creating a problem and this is going to fix that problem. There's not really any development of those particular points. Uh, the delivery is a bit dry. I think you need a little bit more energy. And like I said, um, I, I do think that you need to tell us a little bit more about what's controversial about this. There's a good summary at the end of the speech, so uh, you do finish on a pretty solid point, making the point that you were trying to present. Thank you.